Well, I think he'll, he'll brief them on the summit. He'll talk about the coalition he's put together of 10 nations to, that will help uh, uh, combat ISIS or ISIL uh, in Syria. And he, I think he will give a sense of where he's going on this. He's going to give a speech on Wednesday uh, to the nation. The question is, is he going to ask Congress for any kind of vote? And I think that they do not want a vote, at least in Congress, to, uh, before the election. Having said that, the president would like some buy-in. He likes the idea of having Congress to have a little skin in the game and not just sitting on the sidelines, carping and, convinc and, and, and whining about things. So he's going to try to find a way, I think, either before the election or after the election, to get them in on this, either through a funding appropriation or through some sort of support, the, you know, even if non-binding kind of support resolution, because he doesn't want to be out there hanging on, a, on his own. And you say he wants a buy-in, and again, everything, unfortunately, everything gets shaped by the election that is now 58 days away. Uh, so if, if they're so, think this is so urgent and they're criticizing the president, well, why aren't they willing to take a vote? I would just ask that on their position. But look what happened in this last week. That was the vice president in New Hampshire, Jean Shaheen, a vulnerable Democratic incumbent. She tweeted out after that appearance, do not believe ISIL is manageable. That's a term the president used. Agree these terrorists must be chased to the gates of hell. So she's siding with the vice president there. Al Franken, a liberal Democrat from Minnesota. We don't think his race is in danger, but who knows in this midterm election year. He sends a letter to the attorney general. I was troubled by the president's recent suggestion that the administration has not yet developed a comprehensive strategy to address the growing threat of ISIL's activities in Syria. Uh, is this a sort of the first post-Iraq war shift back to being hawks? I, I, I mean, we know the Republicans are critical of the president. We know John McCain and Marco Rubio are going to say, go into Syria, do something. But Gene Shaheen, Al Franken? Well, I mean, Gene Shaheen's also facing tightening polls in New Hampshire. Scott Brown is getting close. He's running very aggressively as a defense hawk. If she can neutralize him in some way by attacking the president on this issue, maybe that's good for her politically. Same with Al Franken. While he probably should win that race, Republicans believe if there is a wave, they can take that seat. And he wants to show some distance with the president, particularly because Democrats are hearing a lot about this back home from constituents wanting to know what's happening. But don't take that to mean that they actually want to vote to authorize action in Iraq. I mean, Democrats would like to avoid this issue and hope they could go. They can avoid uh, any sort of pre vote, anything until after they return from the November election. And, and so this is this what we're in for state by state, race by race for 58 days, a, a debate about foreign policy, ISIS, maybe about immigration, not about Obamacare and jobs like we thought, at least not at the top of the list? I think uh, foreign policy is rising. If you look at who the Republican nominee is in Alaska, in Iowa, in New Hampshire and elsewhere, it's military veterans on the Republican side and they're running in purple states where they realize swing voters are wary of Republican positions on economics and on social issues. And, and knowing that, they're moving to the right on foreign policy, running as hawks. That's making Democrats like Franken feel uneasy. That's why they're sounding like hawks as well.